the screen is yours. So the, the title is Constructing a Solution to the Panel CC Scenario. And yeah, I'm going to start by explaining what this, the conformal cyclic cosmology is, uh, or CCC, and then uh, move to the, the description of some simple solution, simple uh, and more general solution to this scenario proposed by Paul Todd and the connection between the latter uh, solution and the Fetterman graham ambient metric construction. Okay, so uh, in panel of CCC, we assume that uh, basically that the universe is built up from these building blocks, which he calls eons, and that each eon is a solution of the Einstein field equations with positive cosmological constant lambda, as, as we can see uh, in equation one, where, where G is a uh, four-dimensional Lorentzian metric, and R is a Ricci uh, uh, curvature tensor, and, uh, and uh, another R is a stress, which is color curvature. And on the right-hand side, we have a stress energy tensor, which corres corresponds to the matter content of the universe. So the other assumption is, is that the, at the end, at end of each eon, so at the late stages of the evolution of, of each eon, the universe, uh, there are no massive particles in the universe. So that, mean, that means that it's filled with only with massless fields. And there is also an assumption which was also proposed by Penrose and is called a vial curvature hypothesis, which says that uh, the gravitational entropy is proportional to the scale of vial tensor and that this gravitational entropy at the Big Bang singularity or at the beginning of each eon is small. So in the strong version of this vial curvature hypothesis, we can just assume that the vial uh, tensor, which I am I'm denoting C here, is, is vanishing at the Big Bang singularity. And uh, if we want to match the consecutive eons, we want to do that uh, by identifying the future and future null infinity of the previous eon, which I'm calling I plus with fast null infinity of the consecutive eons, which, uh, which, which are space like hypersurfaces here. So there, there is a misleading name here, right? Because you, you say that it's null infinity because it is how it is called, but actually because of cosmological constant being positive, these null infinities are actually space like hypersurfaces, right? Yes. Yeah, and uh, to get a feeling what I mean by this null infinities, let's for, for a second consider the simplest building block of this CCC, which is just uh, this, the Sitter space time, which is just the simplest solution of Einstein field equations uh, in vacuum with positive cosmological constant. So if we, if we make a, an appropriate coordinate transformation, the Sitter metric can be written in the form given here by uh, two, where the big coordinate t is going from minus pi two to pi over two. And uh, by inspecting this form of the metric, you can see that apart from this uh, singular conformal factor, one over cosine square of t, the metric is regular. So, and this regular metric can be thought of as being the metric of a compact manifold. Uh, which uh, which can be depicted uh, just as here in this picture where where to compact dimension. manifold with boundary yes compact manifold with boundary and yeah so in this this form of the the sitter metric the omega squared is of, of course the metric of the unit two sphere so if we suppress this two uh, unit two sphere dimensions we can depict this compact manifold as, as visible here. And uh, that this is called the Penrose, Carter Penrose diagram of the Sitter space time. And, and uh, yeah, we can see, uh, we can see that, that the, conform, the causal structure is, is, uh, is, is, is preserved here because if uh, if we have a null geodesics with respect to the Sitter metric, then it's also a null geodesics geodesic with respect to this conformally rescaled regular metric. And moreover, may, 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 may I interrupt? May I interrupt mm -hmm. just sure, to, just sure. to just to 
um, make uh, perhaps more uh, clear to somebody that never seen something like this. So you, 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 you start with a metric, which is just the, the sitter metric. And now what you do is just to, to make this conformal compactification, you, you find a conformal, <coughs> a, 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 a conformal class to this the sitter metric such that uh, so you make a, a, a compact compactification of this of this of this four dimensional manifold in such a way that that, that the conformal factor at the boundaries um, goes uh, goes to zero or infinity and then you get a manifold which is which is which is uh, which is conformal meaning that all the causal structure of, of the sitter is preserved, but now the, the, the picture is compact. And then on the left and right, you have just uh, space-like boundaries. And on the top and bottom, you have, you have uh, time-like boundaries. So the, 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 and now you, you, you consider, if, if, you on, if you are only considered in the causal structure of this universe, this is just given on this picture, and what is going on, according to this hypothesis that 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 Tiarek was saying, you 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 want that the vial tensor uh, at the boundaries i plus and i minus is zero, which is of course correct here because the sitter is anyhow conformally flat everywhere. Okay, sorry for interruption. No, no, no problem. So yeah, and so now this now infinities i minus and i plus can be thought of. Uh, by looking at this picture as the points where null geodesics either originate, which is just I minus, or terminate, which is I plus. So now, if you want to uh, construct a solution to this CCC scenario using the sitter space times, we, we just take two copies of this, the sitter. So the left one is just, uh, we'll be describing a previous eon. So the manifold uh, will be, I will call the manifold M hat and a metric G hat, and the right one will correspond to the consecutive or current eon. So the manifold, and I will call the manifold M checked and, and G checked. And uh, as I said, the matching uh, goes on by identifying the red uh, space like hypersurfaces. So the uh, future null infinity of, the, of previous eon and uh, past null infinity i minus of the consecutive eon. And just one, one word about the notation here. So the hat and checked is introduced here in a, in a sense that if you combine those two symbols, you get a full uh, light cone. And the, the hat symbol indicates that this light cone is this, this is the half of the light cone which points uh, uh, towards the past and the checked symbol is the, this half of the light cone which points towards the future. So that was the, the notation that Penrose introduced here and it's, it's used. <clears throat> okay, so now apart from those two manifolds, some M hat and M checked with, the, with its matrix, there's also an assumption about the, the, there exists a third manifold, which is a conformal extension of both M hat and M checked. So uh, we can write that this, this uh, conformal extension M is just a, a sum of M hat and checked and sigma, where sigma is this uh, matching surface of the of eons, as, just as in free, and uh, and that the matrix G hat and G checked can be written as uh, the regular metric G times some conformal factor omega hat and omega checked respectively. And now, as Favel said uh, in his comment, so there is an assumption. So this matching uh, hypersurfaces can be defined in such a way that the checked conformal factor and one over hat conformal factor vanishes there. Uh, and yes, just as in five. So because this this third manifold uh, with, with its metric, which is called bridging metric, is a conformal one, we can uh, we have some freedom in choosing the the metric, and and in particular we can assume that the product of two conformal factors, is omega hat and omega checked, is just minus one. 
so <clears throat> so the oh, yeah, so the, can i can i yeah. can i stop can, can i can i so so let me let me let me now tell you what's going what is the 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 story here so you have you have this previous universe or previous eon in which you have this uh, manifold m hat with g hat and what's going on g is eventually ex expanding to infinity like going asymptotically to the sitter at the conformal end of this universe so the, you you have m hat metric m hat manifold with g hat and g hat is asymptotically the sitter yes. when, when when time goes to infinity on the other hand you have this m check which is now equipped with a metric which is singular at the beginning of time and now you just build a manifold m which consists as Yarek says of a sum of m hat m check and this matching surface and now on this manifold actually you have you have yet another metric which is conformal extension of both g hat and g g g check and yes, and it's regular. And, I, I haven't stressed this out. Everywhere regular, and in particular, it's regular on the on the on the matching hypersurface. So, if there is, if this universe, if this universe, this universe M um, uh, check has singularity at at at, at the at the um, uh, starting surface or at the surface sing, sigma, this singularity is only in conformal factor. So that's what really is. Uh, in this traditional cosmology, that that somehow in in Robertson Walker cosmologies, the, the 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 conformal the metric is conformally flat everywhere, and the only thing what's going on with singularity is in the conformal factor. So that's that's how so somehow what, what you eventually have. So then you have you have something like like extension of m hat to m and extension of m check to n, and on this m you you have actually three metrics. You have metrics regular metric g everywhere and you have this g g, ch g g hat which is which is asymptotically the sitter at sigma and you have g g check which is singular at sigma but singularity is only in the conformal factor so the only bad thing is with this uh, function omega okay sorry uh can, can i ask you so so sigma is hypersurface right so so yes. basically when we restrict we lose information or you consider germ of this hypersurface actually you have a hype yeah you assume that you have a hypersurface there right yeah. but but oh, do you consider like small tubular neighborhood of it or or actually like sm sm lower dimensional <laughs> you see you, you... You you you, ha you have something three dimensional, which is just the, the which is the, you have this sigma, which is which is the uh, uh, ultimate future of 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 the manifold M hat. It's space like, and it, right? And this is a three dimensional surface there, which is space like in this in this conformal metric on on G hat, right? So restriction is just Riemannian metric, so you lose part, right. so, some information, right? That's right. Basically, That's, yeah. right. That's right. It's a three-dimensional. It, it's okay, but you you know that is a boundary of 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 uh, of uh, the sitters, uh, like because that's what is it it, it, it is like the sitter. It is asymptotically the the sitter going from m m uh, hat, and it is. It is essentially, I don't know, something like uh, Robertson Walker at the beginning of M check, right? And you simply glue it over this surface. So if you have a solution, you can do it, but that... But do we have anything like a uh, second fundamental form on, on it, actually? Do, do, do we have only internal information or we also have on it some external information? On, on, you on have external thing? information from the past and you have external information from the from the from the from the uh, from uh, uh, external information from the future and external information from the past of both so you have like the second and short fundamental form right yeah 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 but if you if you if, if you talk to roger he will never tell you what he really wants so the the paper that 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 somehow tries to formalize this is is paper of paul todd which 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 perhaps yeah. Yarek will, will will tell you at the very end where, where this story goes but 
you know, everything here is vague. Actually, I'm, I'm, we are giving this, this talk to mathematicians that, 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 that mathematicians should somehow think what, how to formalize this thing. It is the proposal of a physicist, you know? Yeah, that, that's why I will go to Pfefferman Graham construction in a moment. But yes, uh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, okay, so yeah, just as Pavel said, so uh, th there is a paper by Paul Todd, which is called the equations of CCC, in which he tries to construct some valid model to this scenario. And the strategy uh, which he, he proposes is as follows. So suppose that we choose uh, some matter model in this previous eon M hat. And uh, if we then, if we with this matter model, we can solve the Einstein equations in the, the previous eon. And if we devise a unique prescription for this conformal factor omega hat, then we can uh, and assume that the, those the, the relation six is satisfied. Then the metric G checked, which is the metric uh, in the uh, con consecutive eon, is fully defined, as in relation seven uh, tells you. So we can uh, compute the metric, we can compute Einstein tensor and, uh, and, and this so stress energy tensor, and we can seek to interpret this, uh, this matter model of the consecutive eon in, in terms of some usual matter models considered in GR. And <clears throat> so uh, as an example of a strategy, so first he, he proposes a, a he considers a simplest case, which is just uh, homogeneous and isotropic universe uh, in the, the, the previous eon or in a manifold M hat. So this, this homogeneous and isotropic universe can be described with uh, Friedman Lemet Robertson Walker of our FLRW metric, which has the form eight, uh, where uh, A scalar function A is, depends only on T and it's called scale factor. And the sigma is squared is a metric, it's a three-dimensional metric with constant scalar curvature, either elliptical, Euclidean, or hyperbolic. And uh, yeah, and for either choice, G hat in this form is conformally flat. Uh, then uh, as for matter model uh, in, in homogeneous isotropic universe, uh, uh, the, the matter model there is called a perfect fluid, so the, uh, which is which can be characterized by two scalar functions, which are its mass density rho and isotropic pressure p, and the stress energy tensor, which uh, plays a role in Einstein equations of this perfect fluid, can be written as nine, where u is the, the unit for velocity vector of this perfect fluid. If we want to model uh, the radiation with the use of this perfect fluid, we need to, first of all, we need to prescribe uh, something which is called equation of state if we want to solve Einstein equations with the, the perfect fluid source. And the equation of states is just the relation between the pressure and the mass density rho. And if we, mo if we want to model radiation with this perfect fluid model, the uh, the desired equation of state is uh, the one which is given by 10, where this isotropic pressure is just rho divided by three, which means that the trace of stress energy tensor with respect to the metric vanishes. Uh, just, as, uh, just as is the case for when we consider max stress energy tensor for Maxwell fields. <clears throat> Okay, so if we uh, go on to solve the Einstein so the Einstein equations uh, with this assumption about the metric uh, are just basically the equations for the, the scale factor A, which was uh, multiplying this three-dimensional manifold with constant scalar curvature as an eight. And if we solve them for with positive cosmological constant and perfect fluid uh, as a matter model, we'll see that the, at the late stages of the evolution of the universe, so for t, where, where this time t goes to infinity, the scale factor has a form of an exponent, just as uh, can be seen in 11. So, uh, uh, so 
in a sense, close to the future null infinity I plus, the metric has the form 12, where I introduced alpha uh, and, and which is which just, which is just uh, uh, and where alpha squared is just proportional to the cosmological constant lambda. So now uh, we have the, this, uh, we have a solution in the, in the previous eon. So now the second point of Polto's strategy is a prescription, unique prescription of the, <coughs> the conformal factor omega hat. And here the obvious candidate is just, uh, <coughs> it just says the case where this omega hat is uh, proportional to the scale factor A with the proportionality constant beta as in 13. And if we if we if we look at the formula which relates the, the scalar curvatures uh, under the conformal transformation, we'll see that actually this with this choice of omega hat it satisfies equations equation fourteen where square hat is just a wave operator of metric g hat, and k is a sign of a, a curvature of, of this. Uh, three-dimensional manifold d sigma squared. So if now if we if, if we'd like to generalize this model model of homo, choice of homogeneous and isotropic cosmology in the previous eon, we can somehow model uh, we can somehow choose our unique uh, conformal factor omega hat uh, by by ex, by considering generalization of equation 14 to, to make a unique choice for it. Mm, but yeah, I'm, I'm not gonna proceed, I'm not gonna proceed here with this strategy. Instead, I'm going to uh, move to the more general, uh, <clears throat> more general form of the metric in the previous eon, which is given, which is also discussed in Todd's paper and um, uh, Actually, so th this form of metric uh, given by 50, uh, this form of metric was has been considered in paper by Starobinsky in 1980s, and <clears throat> it has a it has a form of 15, where, where you now uh, instead of the simple. Uh, uh, ex sort of simple form just with the exponent. Now we we, are, we want to consider a series uh, where the expansion is performed close to the future hypersurface I plus. So we want to assume that the uh, spatial metric has the form of 16, where A, B, and C are you now are some where components of tensors A, B, and C are, are functions of space-like coordinates x, i. And if we assume that the Einstein equations uh, are satisfied, uh, satisfied with some decaying stress energy tensor, then uh, we'll see that the tensor the B is actually fully uh, determined by A uh, because the relation 70 has to be satisfied and tensor C is just traceless and divergence free with respect to A. So in, instead of considering homogeneous and isotropic universe given by Friedman Robertson Walker metric, you can assume that uh, it's only in that form asymptotically, but that uh, and the full Yarek, metric. Yeah. This R with index A up is just Ricci tensor calculated for metric G hat with gamma ij taken only with term A ij without these other terms, right? Yeah, that's that's why uh, there's su uh, superscript A. Okay. So that's the uh, Ricci tensor uh, computed with respect to A. <clears throat> uh, okay. Yeah. So and and we can, uh, as I said, we can we can proceed with this Starobinsky form of the metric and devise a uh, prescription for conformal factor omega hat based on this equation 14, which was satisfied in, in Friedman uh, Robertson Walker case, and, and, and seek to interpret the matter model in the, the consecutive eon. But 
I'm, I'm not, going, uh, not going to discuss it here. Instead, uh, I'm going to try to connect this Starobinsky form of the metric with the with Pfefferman Graham ambient metric construction. <clears throat> But before going into this, this Pfeffer van Graham construction, uh, let me recall some result uh, about Cauchy problem for data at future null infinity. So th this result is uh, by Friedrich and it goes like follows. So suppose that we choose a Riemannian free metric A at a uh, future null infinity i plus and a symmetric trace three and divergence three with uh, tensor c with respect to this metric a then uh, if, if those tensors uh, are considered as data prescribed at, at future null infinity then there is a solution of einstein equations uh, with, yeah, which goes to the past and moreover if we conformally rescale this uh, chosen data. So instead of A, we'll choose some theta squared times A, and instead of C, we'll choose one over theta times C as in 19. This data will give rise to the same solution of the Einstein equations. So the situation is uh, more or less as saying that uh, we prescribe a conformal structure on I plus, and then we construct. Uh, then from this conformal structure, we co uh, we construct uh, uh, from three-dimensional conformal structure on I plus. We construct a four-dimensional extension, uh, so, so like a four-dimensional four Poincaré or, or Einstein metric from this data. <clears throat> and this is exactly what's what's. Um, Mm, what what Pfefferman Graham uh, are, are doing in, in in their work. So what they did, what they they, they started from n-dimensional uh, manifold with, with uh, equipped with conformal class of metric G of signature PQ, and they constructed from this n-dimensional manifold with conformal class of metrics n plus two-dimensional. Uh, uh, ambient manifold with ambient metric. <clears throat> and this, so this, this Pfefferman Graham construction is it started by considering a space uh, which I called Hill, called here big G as in 20, which is the space of pairs H and X, where X is a point of, of our initial manifold M, and H is just a rescaled metric. Uh, at this point, gx, where where the scale, we're scaled by some positive number s squared. So now, if we look at this space uh, big G with a <coughs> and equip equip it with a projection p, uh, which can be defined as twenty one, then this space is actually uh, an, an R plus bundle, which I will call metric bundle from now on. And this is um, the metric bundle can be equ equipped with a dilation delta s, which uh, acts acts as in 22, just by rescaling this uh, this first component from the pair by s squared. And I will call the infinite infinitesimal generator of this the dilation by t. So there is also a tautological metric tensor defined on the metric bundle. Uh, with the use of the uh, projection, just as can be seen in 23. So um, <clears throat> by, the, by this, if we look at this definition, we can see that uh, that any vector which is a tangent to the fiber of the, the metric bundle is actually a null vector with respect to G naught. So uh, yeah. <clears throat> okay, so now we can uh, yeah, we can talk about the trivialization of G if we if we choose a representative uh, a representative metric in the conformal class, and this trivialization uh, goes by identifying a point in a cross product of R, R plus times M with an appropriate point in the metric bundle G, just as in twenty four. 
So with this, uh, this definition of trivialization of the metric bundle, you can define the dilation field delta S, uh, projection P, and, uh, uh, and this infinitesimal generator of a dilation T in a simple way, given by 25. And moreover, this tautological metric tensor G0, uh, which, which we want to consider as, as a metric tensor on this um, on metric bundle, can be written uh, as T squared times this uh, G, which, which was the representative uh, metric in the conformal class, just as in 26. Okay, so <clears throat> what has been done here is we started from an, an n-dimensional uh, manifold and by, by constructing this space big G which was the metric bundle we added a null, a null direction because if you recall from the previous slide the tautological metric tensor G0 uh, was defined in a way that the, the, the vectors which are tangent to the fiber are null with respect to this, this metric. So we uh, <clears throat> so as things stand, we, we went from the n-dimensional manifold with metric of signature PQ to n plus one dimensional manifold with the generate metric, so to the metric of signature PQ1. Uh, but ultimately we want to go to n plus two dimensional manifold. So how do we do that? Well, we can just consider uh, another space, which I will call tilt big G, which is just the <coughs> cross product of, of metric bundle with real line, just as in 27, where the, this metric bundle can be embedded in the space uh, with an embedding yota as in 28. And now uh, if, we, if we start from an odd dimensional manifold M, uh, this uh, space till the big G uh, can be can be thought of as ambient space if uh, with ambient metric G tilt if certain conditions which are listed here are satisfied. At least the Pfefferman Graham are calling it the ambient space is space if those conditions are satisfied. For example, the pullback of the ambient metric G tilt is just this tautological metric tensor G0 on, on the metric bundle. And the, <clears throat> the most important condition is that the Ricci tensor of this ambient metric G tilt vanishes up to infinite order at, uh, at the G cross zero. Okay, now, <clears throat> uh, as for the <clears throat> as for the form of the metric, so there is a proposition uh, which is proved by Pfefferman and Graham, which says that uh, if we restrict ourselves to the open neighborhood of this metric bundle in the n plus two dimensional space G tilt, then the ambient metric G can be can be written in the form given by twenty nine, where a big I and a big J are are going over the set of coordinates of our initial manifold M, which I called Xi, and the coordinate T, which, which is the, the fiber coordinate. And uh, from this, this form the metric, we can, for example, see that the, the vector coordinate vector D rho is a null vector, where rho was this additional uh, coordinate which was introduced when, when I defined the space tilt, big tilt G. And moreover, uh, there is also a theorem also proved by, by Fairman Graham, which says that uh, if we are given as a smooth metric G on our n-dimensional manifold and a symmetric traceless tensor H, uh, then <clears throat> This uh, IJ component of an ambient metric, when, when restricted to the half space rho greater than zero or rho less than zero, can be written in the form given by 30. Uh, and this form, this Taylor expansion of, of those coefficients psi uh, that are uniquely defined up to infinite order.
They are Taylor expansion rho. in which variable? T, t or rho? Mm, rho. Uh, okay, so so in a sense we 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 have our n plus two dimensional metric, but now uh, this if you want to connect this to the Starobinsky form of the metric, we, we have to somehow modify this construction because in Starobinsky metric or in Cauchy problem for data at non-infinity, we are starting from an n-dimensional manifold where, where n is free and we want to construct a four-dimensional manifold from it, not five-dimensional one. Uh, which would uh, what what would be the result if we apply directly the Fehrman Graham construction? So we saw how we want to reduce dimension by one, and uh, this is the and the answer the answer for the question how can we do that in in this context? Uh, the the short answer is that you can just take an ambient metric and consider some hypersurface in it, and. Uh, and actually, that, that's what that's also what Ferman and Graham discussed in, the, in the, this, this seminal paper. So, <clears throat> if we assume uh, that uh, apart from the fact that we, we are we are given a symmetric traceless to tensor H, uh, also that this, this tensor is divergence free with respect to the metric, then the ambient metric can be written in a form thirty one. Where now the the length square of coordinate vector dt is just two rho, and if we introduce new variables u r just as in thirty two, and uh, we we consider a hypersurface given by the equation s equals to one, then the induced metric on this hypersurface uh, will have the form thirty three, which I which I called g plus. Maybe and maybe it should be it should be said that this metric h at 31, when rho is goes to zero, becomes a metric from the conformal class that you started with, right? So h, yeah. h when rho goes to zero is just particular choice of the metric from the conformal class in n dimensions. Yeah, actually, yeah, I think it can be seen from 33 as well, because so like if, if we, there's a certain limit in R. Yeah, but and uh, yeah, but moreover, from uh, gauss kodatsy equations, if the the Ricci tensor of our initial ambient metric vanishes, then the Ricci tensor of uh, this G plus metric given by 33 is proportional to the metric itself. Which, uh, which for example holds uh, for for vacuum uh, space times with positive cosmological constants. So now uh, the last last thing to do is here to make this connection, make a connection between this construction and Starobinsky metric is actually to is to introduce some new coordinate in the Starobinsky expansion to, to recast the metric in a form uh, considered by Pfefferman and Graham. And it can be done in an easy way be, uh, because if you look at, if we recall the Starobinsky form of the metric 36 and we introduce a new coordinate and call it also R, uh, where R is just the x exponent of minus alpha t, where alpha was the, of the constant uh, proportional to the square root of cosmological constant. Then the Starobinsky form of the metric, Starobinsky metric uh, can be written in the form 37, which by comparison with the metric uh, obtained in the Feherman Graham construction 35, uh, can be seen, it can be seen that those metrics have almost exactly the same form. Uh, yeah. So now, uh, the, the, this whole Feverman Graham construction has been done with, with the assumption that the Ricci tensor of the ambient metric vanishes, which is perhaps not optimal if we want to, to construct some, some extensions, if we want to construct a physical realistic space time with some matter. So the goal here uh, would be to extend this, this Feverman Graham construction. 
uh, such that the so more general uh, conditions or metric are, are imposed, not not that the uh, only that the metric is proportional, the Ricci tensor of the metric is proportional to the metric itself, and uh, but to, to include uh, the, to, to include the equations with, with matter. Okay, that's it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, I like your talk. Thank you very much because I never heard you talking, so it's good. Yeah. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you. Any comments about this? Ah, everybody is muted, maybe. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I have a, I don't know, very simple uh, question that, uh, well, I don't really know about uh, these constructions uh, well, but I was wondering if you really have to go two dimensions up and then take a hypersurface or there's a way to just, you know, bypass this and really get this Poincaré einstein metric without going into the ambient metric. Uh, that's a good question, but I, oh, there is, I have to say that this the, this whole uh, deal with Pfefferman Graham ambient metric construction is is a new thing for me, and uh, I I just know about some results from this this one paper, which first you go where they first you go to n plus two dimensional manifold, and then reduce the lane dimension by choosing an appropriate hypersurface, and I don't know about any other result. Maybe Pablo can can say something. And, and I, I, can, I can say that as 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 Jarek uh, was uh, introducing this Poincaré Einstein uh, construction for the for the conformal metric in any dimension is precisely as uh, Robin Graham and and Charles Pfefferman uh, present in their paper, and I think that also so they they go first to two dimensions higher, and then go to to dimension one down and this construction is simply because I think that this you go like this because it's very natural construction you simply re reverse this what you get in Lorentzian space-time that if you have a Lorentzian space-time you have you 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 have a cone there like in Minkos let's consider Minkowski space space-time if you take Minkowski space-time you have cone there and if you now take a space like Hypersurface that this space-like hypersurface uh, takes cuts the cone, so make a make a cone cut, and this cone cut gets a metric, which is which is which is which is uh, induced from the Lorentzian metric outside, and then this this metric. Now you can say ask what's going on when you just change the space space like hypersurface then you will get another cut but it turns out that what you get on this another cut you will have a metric which is conformally related to the other so somehow you, what what Pfefferman and Graham were doing they were reversing this construction so they were saying that if I have a conformal structure let's say on a Riemannian manifold then I can make a Lorentzian manifold of two dimension higher such that this conformal structure is just a light count cut cut of this of this two more dimensional Lorentzian space time, and it is how it was going. But then, 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 uh, both Pfefferman and Graham observed that actually, when you take this hypersurface, this one hypersurface more that you go one dimension down, that this metric resembles this metric, which is just on this n plus one dimensional space, it resembles very, something very similar to this, what you have on Poincaré disk. And then somehow they, they, they were getting this Poincaré-Einstein construction from the more natural, more physical construction of this Pfefferman-Graham. That's, that's the only thing I know. Hello, hello. Is there anybody there? Yeah, so, so um, may I ask a question? So, um, so uh, once again, it's about the same construction. So suppose we start with three-dimensional Riemannian, go up with Fetterman gram then we go to signature 4,1. And then we actually take slice to 
to go to signature three comma one, right? Is it possible actually to take another slice to go yes. to signature four comma zero? Yes, you can. You can. You can take. You you can take. You can actually take two different slices and get either uh, Einstein with. Uh, then you will get different signature. You can either get get from four four one. You can get you can get three one, but I think that you can also get uh, get uh, four zero. And, and, and we yes. will have nice uh, like Einstein equation for, for this. Yes, 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 yes. The same. Yes. So you always have two possibilities of taking the slightest. Either going one by one dimension with this signature or, or with the other signature. And, and but there will be some singularity, right? There's, there's like some conformal singularity. Uh, yes, but 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 conformal conformal singularity for conformal structure is just like choosing <laughs> wrong, wrong coordinates in in Riemannian metric. This what's going on with singularity of the given metric is just simply a wrong choice of a metric from the conformal class, right? Yeah, yeah. Are there any other questions? So maybe one uh, one more question. So uh, now we talk about like uh, vacuum equation, Einstein equation, right? So that's actually in some uh, coordinate is analytic. So that's pretty well rigid uh, construction. And Fermat gram actually uses, right? Uh, this uh, uh, analyticity. So if you would like to include the right hand side, right, the tensor T. Are there any theorems which well play the same role? Uh, so that you would like now to solve Einstein equation with uh, matter, uh, and then you you expect to get kind of analytic solutions. So I was thinking about the re results where the the stress energy tensor can be uh, the, 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 there exists a Taylor expansion of it or. Yeah, well, like in some cases, for example, if you put radiation condition or whatever, then you get, well, the same conclusion. So, so that, well, still in some good coordinates, it is analytic mm -hmm. solution. Do, do, do you know about that? I think they work with formal Taylor expansions, right? The Graham, the formal Graham. I mean, they work with the Taylor series, you know, in order to obtain the matrix. Yes, but I mean, like an analytic case is just uh, well, you 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 get some some actual metrics. Yeah, I have to say I, I don't recall the uh, results on that uh, right now. So because like it looks like you can work with. This Taylor series and form. I mean, I'm, uh, what is the mathematical essence of like uh, general? Maybe generalization will be very similar if you assume some analyticity for stress and. Uh, um, I just wanted to say that Pavel's computer died suddenly, so he he's uh, <laughs> returning soon. Uh, yeah, we are back. Um, oh, okay. Anyhow, so may, may I still say something? So, so uh, if you are interested in this thing, please read this paper of Paul Todd about these equations of CCC. And uh, I think that our only observation here is this, that and I spoke with Paul about this. So, so neither Paul Todd nor, nor uh, I don't know, I didn't speak to Starobinsky, but Paul Todd didn't know that the, the Starobinsky expansion is nothing but the nothing else but the Poincaré-Einstein ex expansion of, of Fermat-Graham. So somehow physicists have it on their own and they didn't know that, that they speak prose. Yeah, I mean, Starobinsky, uh... I took this expansion from land from Lifshitz, I, I think, from even 1960s, where, where, where they were considering expansions around the Big Bang singularity. So 
So he took th those expansions and he applied it to future now infinity. And and that's that's actually that's another thing from this Feferman Graham thing that Feferman Graham made this construction and they were very happy. But even when writing their first paper in 1980s, that they were just like uh, summarizing what what they did without the proofs. They they observed, and that's what Robin told me that, that they discovered that actually this construction is was known already for for Schouten and Schouten and Hamtias in 1936 made the same essentially. So somehow this 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 expansion is rediscovered by people over the time. And I asked Robin why, and he said because it's very natural. Yeah, yeah. I mean that, that's what I wanted to say. So. They they just they were just looking for a solution which is like a direct generalization of this Friedman Robertson Walker metric. So what more natural than generalization could could one think of instead of just expanding in in, in a series, right? Okay. Any other questions, comments? What to do is this? So what is the very first question? Is uh, this go the goal, the, the last sentence is what you are trying to do here? Or? Okay, so the, I can answer. So the, yeah. the, the, the thing is somehow you would like to, you, 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 you have this, this proposal of Roger that you have these two manifolds being glued in a way, in, in, in sort of conformal way, uh, along space like hypersurface, which is uh, vile flat in this, in this uh, metric that goes across both, across this hypersurface. And now the, the physical question is what kind of, what, if the property of the previous aeon, like physical property, meaning the matter content, meaning the energy momentum tensor of the previous aeon. So you have in previous aeon, you have ma matter contents that determines your metric via Einstein equations. And now you want to glue it conformally as Penrose wants. And now the question is, if you want that the other thing on the other side satisfies mm -hmm. also Einstein equations, mm -hmm. Can somehow the matter content in the lower universe determines the matter content of the previous of the next universe? So somehow, precisely, you, you precisely want to do this what what Pfefferman Graham did. You had you, you you had a conformal structure on the one hypersurface, and then assuming Ricci flatness, you get a unique Lorentzian metric upstairs, or unique, or assuming assuming Einstein condition, Ricci proportional to the metric, you had a unique metric in the, in the future. So somehow, somehow Einstein equations were, were, were determining, determining the, 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 the metric in the future, in the, in the, next, in the, in the next aeon. The, the, the thing is that it is, the, the, it is determined by a condition which is not the physical one, because you would like to have a, you, you would like to have more general thing. You would like to say that the metric downstairs is not, let's say, Ricci flat or purely Einstein, but it is some it has some right hand side which is just the matter content. And then the question is if this determines the metric in the future on uniquely. Okay, mm -hmm. something like this. But but like in, in Pfefferman uh, con uh, Graham construction, you don't have actually previous and, and future. No, it's like zero. Yes, yes, because yes. Yes. Maybe the question is, uh, uh, what uh, uh, this matter? What does this matter induce on hypersurface? Say it again. So maybe there is some additional structure which matter induces on hypersurface, right? Maybe hypersurface is not just Riemannian, but there is some additional structure coming from the matter. Uh, yes, no. You know, everything is very vague here. So the, the, the point is that, okay, maybe, yeah, there, may, no, maybe, uh, maybe, maybe next time, if we meet next time, I can tell you uh, something which we did some time ago with Krzysiek Meissner, how the perfect fluid downstairs and some analyticity condition of the, of the, 
of this G metric along the hypersurface determined the perfect fluids in the previous universe via Einstein equation. So I, maybe I will tell you next time this and you will understand what can happen here. What I can do, I can only play with examples and just get some intuition what really is needed or what really I want. Because this proposal of Roger is really very vague. No? But uh, okay, just as a preview. So when tech have perfect fluids and there are vector fields there, right? Uh, so what does a vector field does okay, when you all, approach? Field, when you approach this vector, this vector field, which is you in this in this in this perfect fluid, is not a conformal object. So somehow this vector u is singular at the at the cross at the at this, at this hypersurface in both universes. So in one it just expands to infinity, in the other it goes to zero. So somehow because because this guy this this u vector as a unit unit vector, which is time-like, is not a conformal object. The only conformal objects that, 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 that happily pass from one universe to the other are just null curves, because uh, null geodesics, because these are just the conformal. Pro but, but there's conformal invariant conditions. This U can be tangent or not tangent to, 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 to the hypersurface. U, U is transver U should be transversal. Transverse, yeah? OK, OK. Yeah. yeah, but this U is not well defined on hypersurface. Yeah, yeah, I understand. You have to rescale it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Very good. Okay. So you ex you yeah. expect that you indeed uh, can uh, find like unique natural stress energy tensor in the upper part from the lower part. Yeah, finding a, a, a I, I, tensor is a, like a first thing. The the, the biggest yeah. bigger question is uh, how to interpret this stress energy tensor if it can yes, be interpreted in the in yes you 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 would like you would like to have what you would like to have eventually you would like to have something like this that that in the previous aeon the previous the, the matter content at the previous aeon uh, is asymptotically uh, zero. That, that there is that there is only cosmological constants which is positive. So we want that the that the metric g hat when when going up to the to this uh, wound super uh, hypersurface that this metric g hat when approaching this hypersurface becomes uh, uh, the Sitter space. On the other hand, you would like to have that the metric that the metric uh, in the uh, upper Aeon should be filled with incoherent radiation, which is just this perfect fluid with, with pressure uh, proportional to, uh, to uh, energy density with the factor one third. So asymptotically, you would like to have that, 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 that both universes are like this. And then somehow, but it's only asymptotically at the surface, how it should, how it should look like. On the other, <laughs> on the other hand, you would like that the metric g hat in some in some open set near the the hypersurface, uh, this one that hypersurface down, satisfy Einstein equations with some energy momentum tensor that is asymptotically zero, and the mm -hmm. other one, another should, should this g check should be Einstein's solution to the Einstein equations with energy momentum tensor which is asymptotically when going down to this t equals zero surface, it just behaves, for example, like, like this, like this uh, radiation, incoherent radiation. So somehow, uh, and then, then so I will, I, I will tell you maybe next time what we did with Krzysztof Meissner, that we assumed perfect fluid downstairs, perfect fluid upstairs, but two different perfect fluids. And we were trying to understand what's going on that if we assume that the metric G is analytic along the cross surface, how perfect fluid from downstairs get transmuted to another perfect fluid upstairs. <laughs> Something like that. Okay. 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 Thank you. I think that we should thank Thank Jarek Kopinski.
very strongly because he learned these things last week. So I told him about this and asked him to prepare to read Pfeffer and Graham, to read Paul Todd and prepare seminars. So he made a wonderful job because he learned everything of this, what he was saying today, just during last week. So we should thank him very much. That's true. Thank you. <laughs>